previously on The Grass Diaries. Ace Rolla, this looks absolutely nothing like Game of the Year 2017, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You lied to us. I went into Maya and I put together a little grass blade model. Without the image texture covering up space, we need to draw a lot more grass blades to make it dense enough. We can just up our values though, and we achieve the desired density. Did you really believe it would be that easy? In order to get the same performance, this new grass is only covering a 32 by 32 meter plane. So how do we fix this? Well, with doctorate thesis level algorithms, of course, the result is a buffer of grass positions that is contiguous in memory and only includes grass that is in view. This process executes every single frame to calculate which grass is in view and updates the buffers accordingly. Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new video, and what I hope is the last video on this topic. Our goal today is getting the grass we created in the last video to cover any area we want while still being highly performant. But as it stands, we have two main problems. Our GPU culling only works on up to 262,000 grass blades, which is not nearly enough to cover any area we want. Additionally, we use the same grass blade model regardless of view distance, even though grass far away is barely visible. But what if I told you we could solve both of these problems at the same time? Take a look at this square with an area of 300 meters squared, the same as our target area. While we could have a single buffer of grass cover this up, it would not be nearly dense enough to look like a complete field. But what if we had multiple buffers of grass? We could divide up this square evenly and have one buffer of grass positions for each piece. We then run our culling algorithm on each buffer, and the result is an area of grass as large as we could ever want. This method of data division is known as chunking, a concept mostly everyone should be familiar with due to the massive success of Minecraft, a game in which the chunks are extremely obvious. With some changes to position calculation and some tinkering on the code to keep track of multiple buffers, our grass field now looks like so. Well, it's the exact same, which is great. If we visualize the chunks of grass in our shader, we can see that the field is properly divided into any number of chunks. In this case, it is five per axis, for a total of 25. We are now able to expand our grass field to the area of the original billboard grass, and we find that it actually works quite well. I get an average of about 64 FPS at full resolution, but this fluctuates depending on the position of the camera. There's still a lot more we can do, so let's move on to implementing level of detail. In order for level of detail to work, we need a lower poly grass blade model. I went into Maya and modified the model we were using to be just a single triangle. I also took the time to optimize the higher detail model. I reduced the total vertices by 6 to get an additional performance increase. Anyways, we don't have to do any work at all to get this working because of the chunks. All we need to do is check the distance between the camera and a given chunk, and if that distance is greater than an arbitrary threshold, then we draw the low poly model instead. If we didn't have the chunks, then we would need to have two separate position buffers of grass, one for high detail and one for low detail, and then both of those buffers would need to be cold, which is twice the amount of culling we would need to do per frame. So the chunks really saved us here. To show you that there's no visual difference, here is a picture of the grass with no level of detail, and here is a picture with the level of detail enabled. To prove it's working, I have colored all of the low detail grass here red. With the level of detail optimization, our performance increases to an average of 82 FPS, which isn't as much as I thought it would be, but it's still a decent increase. The last optimization I made was cutting off the grass at a certain distance from the camera. This, of course, looks really ugly, but it reduces the amount of grass being rendered. Coincidentally, I went over how to cover this up with my last video, which you should probably definitely go watch. Thank you. With fog applied to hide the missing grass in the distance, our final performance lands us at an average FPS of around 100, running on my 1660.
Did you do it? Yes. What did it cost? As I mentioned in nearly all my videos, everything has a cost. Every line of code you write increases the time it takes for your program to execute, and every object you instantiate will take up some of your finite memory. I've already shown you the time it takes for the grass to render, but what about the memory cost? Let's start with a multiple choice question. How many blades of grass does our field contain? Is it A, 256, B, 16,384, C, 1,048,576, or D, none of the above. If you picked answer D, you're correct, or you saw my Twitter thread. Either way, there are actually 7.3 million blades of grass in the field. Each blade of grass holds its position, its world space UV coordinates, and its vertical displacement from the ground. This means that there are seven floating point numbers per grass blade. Each float is four bytes of memory, so each grass blade costs us 28 bytes. That's not a whole lot, but when you multiply that number by 7.3 million, it gets quite large. Converting that number to megabytes, our grass buffer costs us 204 megabytes. But wait, we actually have a copy of this buffer, which is where our compacted, visible grass blades end up. So in total, this field of grass costs us 408 megabytes of RAM, which is nearly half a gig. This wouldn't be a huge deal if this was on the CPU, since everyone has like 16 gigs of RAM nowadays, but this data exists on the GPU, so it's using up VRAM, and my GPU only has 6 gigs of that, so around 8% of my total GPU's resources are being consumed by the grass. This doesn't seem like a whole lot, but when it comes to creating a full video game, the memory cost of your assets is something to consider, lest you run out of memory. In reality, you'd probably never need this much grass. This was merely to prove that it was reasonably possible to cover the area in my first grass video such that you can't call me a fraud. There's definitely more I could do to optimize it further, but for now, I'll be putting the project to rest. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.